The LinkedIn Podcast Network is sponsored by TIAA. TIAA makes you a retirement promise, a promise of a guaranteed retirement paycheck for life. Learn more at TIAA.org backslash promises pay off. LinkedIn presents. Were a nuclear weapon to strike America, even from a rogue nuclear-armed nation like North Korea, U.S. policy dictates a nuclear counterattack. This response would almost certainly set off a series of events that will quickly spiral out of control. Here's what General Robert Keeler, the former commander of U.S. Strategic Command, told me could happen if a nuclear war were to start. The world could end in the next couple of hours. Hi, this is the Next Big Idea Daily. I'm your host, Michael Kovnat, and it's Thursday. Do you live in an American city, large or small? If you do, I hate to tell you, but there's almost certainly a nuclear weapon pointed at you right now. The same is true for people in many cities around the world. And even if you're not directly in the path, I'm sure you know that an all-out nuclear war would impact every human life on the planet and even has the potential to end our species. I don't mean to be a bummer, these are just facts. Facts that have faded into the background for many of us. After decades of living in a nuclear world, it's hard to keep the threat top of mind. But Annie Jacobson thinks we should. Annie is a journalist, a television producer, a New York Times bestselling author, and a Pulitzer Prize finalist. For her book, Nuclear War, A Scenario, she interviewed dozens of military and civilian experts to learn what would really happen in the critical minutes and hours after a missile is launched. Here she is to share some of her key insights. Nuclear war is insane. Today, there are nine nuclear-armed nations with more than 12,500 nuclear weapons ready to be used. As Professor Brian Toon told me in our interviews, Toon is one of the original five authors of the nuclear winter theory, along with his former professor, Carl Sagan. And Toon reminded me that if you're living in a city in America right now, big or small, there's a nuclear weapon pointed directly at you. And the U.S. government has a nuclear weapon pointed directly at hundreds of cities across the world. To be exact, As of 2024, America has 1,770 deployed nuclear weapons, most of which are on ready-for-launch status, 400 of which, the Minuteman ICBM, can launch in as little as 60 seconds. They don't call the Minutemen for nothing. Were a nuclear weapon to strike America, even from a rogue nuclear-armed nation like North Korea, U.S. policy dictates a nuclear counterattack. This response would almost certainly set off a series of events that will quickly spiral out of control. Here's what General Robert Keeler, the former commander of U.S. Strategic Command, told me could happen if a nuclear war were to start. The world could end in the next couple of hours. And consider this. Vladimir Putin recently said that he is not bluffing about the possibility of using weapons of mass destruction. North Korea has accused the United States of having a sinister intention to provoke a nuclear war. U.N. Secretary General Antonio Guterres recently warned the world that humanity is one misunderstanding, one miscalculation away from nuclear annihilation. This is madness, Guterres says. As odd as this may seem, the U.S. maintains a nuclear launch policy called Launch On Warning. This means that if a military satellite indicates America is under nuclear attack and a second early warning radar confirms that information, 
The President of the United States launches nuclear missiles in response before any nuclear bomb strikes the United States. Said differently, the U.S. doesn't wait to absorb the nuclear blow. Some people say this isn't accurate. Former Secretary of Defense William Perry set the record straight for this book. He told me, Once we are warned of a nuclear attack, we prepare to launch. This is policy. We do not wait. Period. And this is because the U.S. president has sole authority to launch nuclear weapons. He asks permission of no one, not the Secretary of Defense, not the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, not the U.S. Congress. You may say, how could this be in a democracy which is predicated on the very idea of checks and balances? Congress confirms this is fact, and I quote, The authority is inherent in his role as commander-in-chief. The president does not need the concurrence of either his military advisors or the U.S. Congress to order the launch of nuclear weapons. Once the president learns from his nuclear command and control team that he must act, he has just six minutes to respond. And respond means respond with nuclear weapons. Here's what President Ronald Reagan had to say about this six-minute time frame. Six minutes is an irrational amount of time to decide whether to release Armageddon, he lamented in his memoir. Six minutes to decide how to respond to a blip on a radar screen? How could anyone apply reason at a time like that? And yet, the president must respond anyway. In this six-minute window, he must decide how many nuclear weapons to use, which targets to strike, while also being briefed on estimates of how many tens of thousands or millions of people will be instantly incinerated, with an almost equal number dying days, weeks, or months later from radiation poisoning, all under this literal ticking clock. An ICBM cannot be redirected or recalled. An ICBM is an intercontinental ballistic missile. It is a weapon system that is central to nuclear war, along with nuclear bombers and nuclear-armed submarines. The time it takes to get an ICBM from a launch pad in Russia to the United States was precisely determined in 1960, shortly after the ICBM had been invented. The Pentagon's chief scientist, a man named Herb York, wanted to know precisely how many minutes it would take for one of these mass extermination rockets to get here. These documents, jealously guarded by defense officials, were found by me inside an archive that houses York's personal papers at the Giesel Library in San Diego. York hired a group of defense scientists called the Jason Scientists to whittle the ICBM travel time down to its most accurate form. The result, York learned, was 26 minutes and 40 seconds, from launch to annihilation. The Jason scientists also calculated that the ICBM's travel time occurs in three very simple phases of flight. Boost phase, where the rocket launches and travels upwards into space, which lasts five minutes. Mid-course phase, where the weapon flies through space at around 500 miles up to get across the Earth very fast. This phase lasts 20 minutes. And finally, there is the terminal phase, where the warhead re-enters the atmosphere and detonates on a city. This lasts 1.6 minutes, or 100 seconds. These calculations were done when the U.S. and Soviet Russia were the only nuclear-armed nations. As I mentioned earlier, 
Today, there are nine countries with nuclear weapons. The United States, Russia, China, France, the United Kingdom, Pakistan, India, Israel, and North Korea. Given North Korea's geographical location, the launch to target time from the Korean peninsula to the east coast of the United States is slightly longer. MIT Professor Emeritus, ballistic missile expert, and former Pentagon advisor Ted Postel did the math for my book. It's 33 minutes. Once an ICBM has been launched, it cannot be redirected or recalled. The papers stashed away in Herb York's dusty archives forewarned the world of nuclear Armageddon. The clock is still ticking. A bolt out of the blue attack is how U.S. nuclear command and control refers to an unwarned large nuclear attack. In plain English, it's a sneak attack, a deadly first strike. Here's what the former Assistant Secretary of Defense for Nuclear, Chemical, and Biological Defense Programs a man named Andrew Weber, told me about the fears among the powers that be in Washington, D.C. A bolt out of the blue attack against D.C. is what everyone in D.C. fears most, Weber said. Since the early 1950s, the United States government has spent trillions of dollars preparing to fight a nuclear war while also refining protocols meant to keep the U.S. government functioning after hundreds of millions of Americans become casualties of an apocalyptic-scale nuclear holocaust. Because the Pentagon is a top target for a strike by America's nuclear-armed enemies, in the scenario in my book, Washington, D.C. gets hit in a bolt out of the blue attack with a one megaton thermonuclear bomb. Nuclear war is the only scenario, other than an asteroid strike, that could end civilization in a matter of hours. The soot from burning cities and forests will blot out the sun and cause a nuclear winter. State-of-the-art climate modeling predicts 5 billion humans will die. In the words of Nikita Khrushchev, the survivors will envy the dead. A nuclear strike on the Pentagon is just the beginning of a scenario, the finality of which will be the end of civilization as we know it. This is the reality of the world in which we all live. Okay, well, I'm sure we'd all like to go back to forgetting about the nuclear issue, but I'm afraid we don't really have that luxury. Stay alert and pick up a copy of Nuclear War, a scenario, wherever you buy books. I will try to end your week on a happier note, though. I'll be back tomorrow to share some ideas from This Beauty, A Philosophy of Being Alive by Nick Riggle. Come on back then.